a couple of these. Section 14 of the Declaration of Faith of the International Church of the Four Square. It's the Four Square Churches. Uh, I like the way they state this. So we you know, uh, we believe that divine healing is the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to heal the sick and the afflicted in answer to believing prayer. That he who is the same yesterday, today, and forever has never changed. Well, that would make sense. <clears throat> if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, he doesn't change. Isn't that right? But it's still an all-sufficient help in the time of trouble, able to meet the needs of and quicken into the newness of life, the body, as well as the soul and the spirit, in the answer to the, the faith of them who ever pray with submission to his divine and sovereign will. Glory to God. And we, we start talking about the reasonable divine healing and so forth. And I think last week we were getting into the origin of sickness. And so we recovered, we covered, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, sin, came into the sick, sin came into the world and sickness came as an accompaniment to it. Uh, the affliction that came on Job was, um, was from the devil. You know, there's a lot of people who just spend all the time trying to prove that God made him sick. But even, even if God allowed it, the devil's the one who did it. And, I, and, I, and as we said last week, we're talking about Job. It was really fear that opened the door. Satan simply came uh, to find out the legal parameters by which he could operate within. Um, and uh, God, God said, you know, all, all he has is in your hand, except you can't touch his life. And then in Job, the second chapter in the 28th verse, or somewhere around that area, uh, Job says, that which I feared came on me, and that which I was greatly afraid of has befallen me. And, uh, but then Job 42.10 says, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And if you read that, the Bible tells us he got double all of his possessions back. He got double the kids. He got double everything back. Amen. Praise the Lord. And uh, then we talked about how Acts 10.38 says that Jesus is the healer and God, God anoints Jesus to heal and that the devil was the oppressor. <clears throat> and then we started, I think we kind of got here and didn't really move into this. Um, but let's go ahead and um, look at Luke chapter 4, verse 18, in conjunction with Isaiah 61. So looking over at Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and um, praise the Lord, I forgot my glasses tonight. Now on my iPad, it's easy, I just make it bigger. My Bible, I, can't, I just can't stretch the Bible there. <laughs> Hallelujah. It would be nice, wouldn't it? So we're going to use, the, we're gonna use my, 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 my e-sword on my here. That, that one won't work either. Maybe the other Bible will work better. If not, we're going to put it up there. No, nope, Luke chapter 4. <laughs> we'll just read it from up here. Glory to God. It says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, recover your sight to the blind, and set at liberty to all them that are bruised. Now, Isaiah 61 is where he's reading. Remember, the Bible says that Jesus went to the synagogue, as was his custom, and stood up for to read. And when he opened the book, now actually, the, the, you know, King James guys said book. It was really a scroll. You know, it, it, you know, they could have said, you know, he opened the scroll, which would, it would have been, wouldn't have been the book, you know. Uh, probably used the same word, but in those days they used scrolls, okay. They didn't have turning pages and glued on the ends and all that stuff. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't there. So he opened the scroll and found the place where it was written, the Spirit of the Lord's upon me, because he's anointed me too. Now, he goes on this things here to heal the brokenhearted, to, you know, to uh, um, preach deliverance to the captives, to bind up the wound, bruised, and set liberty to them that are bruised, and so forth. And what we have here is we have the prophetic um, calling of the ministry of Jesus. Jesus was called to minister life and to minister to the, um, uh, the sick, amen, and to set those captives free. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. And so let's look over um, into... I want to do a real quick search here. Um, round about their villages. Yep, let's see here. Looking over Mark's gospel. Now, we get, go ahead and get Mark 6, 1. Mark chapter 6 um, 
He went out from this, came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. Next, next, let's keep going. Go ahead, you know, next verse. Can we just can, can scroll that easy? Can we just pop to the next verse? You don't know how to do it. It's not loading up there. Okay. All right. And, and when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogues. Many hearing, him, uh, hearing things were astonished, saying, Whence hath these man these things? And what wisdom is this given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? And is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James, and Joseph, and Judah, and Simon, are that not his sisters with us? And they were offended at him. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You can't get anywhere if you're offended at the person here brought, sent to bring you the stuff that you need. Now, people get mad, they get mad and leave churches because they get offended somewhere along the line. And they'll go out and say, well, he's not flowing in the anointing, or he's this, he's that, all kinds of stuff. And in fact, well, somewhere along the line, they got offended at the one who's ministering. And they're not growing, they're not getting anything. So they went over to another church, visit over there, and woo, glory to God, it's just a preacher. Now, I'm not saying this is every case, but this does happen. Okay? You know, I mean, we know when they're hollering, we're behind you, we're behind you, we're behind you, we're behind you. And then it gets, we're behind you, we're behind you, we're behind you. <laughs> they're so far back we can't even find them anymore but if you get a, if you ever get offended at me because I, I looked at you wrong I didn't pat you on the back right I didn't tell you how lovely you looked today I, you know that, how many remember that old that old southern gospel song uh, uh, excuses brother Bill excuses excuses you hear them every day the devil will supply them if from church you stay away when people come to know the Lord the devil always loses, so to keep them folks away from church, he offers them excuses, and they begin to start talking all these different reasons, you know. Well, it's something like, it's too hot, it's too cold, you know. I mean, uh, he preached too long, he preached too short. They keep, and then one the old lady goes, well, he didn't even shake my hand. <laughs> you know, they get all upset, people get upset, you know, and, and it's, it's excuses. But really, those excuses are really offenses we take. And if you take offense, just like Jesus, now let's tell you something. If they got offended at Jesus, they're going to get offended at me or, or other ministers or pastors. They're hearing about the things he's done. I mean, can you imagine hearing he's raised the dead, he's healing the sick, he's casting out devils. I mean, all kinds of miracles are taking place. And then they go, well, that's, that's Mary's son. There's his brothers and there's his sisters. Who does he think he is? And they got offended at him. Next verse. And Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and among his own kin and his own house. Next verse. And he could there do no mighty work. Say, that, that's King Jimmy for except. He laid his hands upon a few sick folk or sickly folk with minor ailments, the Greek really literally says, and healed them. Back up. He could there. Did it say wouldn't? What does it say? You, if you put the conjunction, you know, could there do no, that means he couldn't do a mighty work there. Didn't say he would there do no mighty work. Didn't say he refused to do a mighty work. Said he couldn't. Why? Because they got offended. Amen. But see, the propheticness of Jesus' ministry was part of it was to heal the sick. You know, uh, I believe Malachi says, and that's spelled S-U-N, but the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. He sent his word and healed them. Amen? Jesus, in, in the beginning was the word. John's gospel says in the beginning was the word. The word is with God. The word was God. God sent his word. God sent Jesus, and he healed them. Amen? I said Amen. And then he goes on and says, in, in the next, and then in the next verse it says this, and he went round about their villages teaching. He marveled because of unbelief, and he went round about their villages teaching. Why? He had to combat the unbelief or the offense, and the only way he could fix it was through the teaching of the Word of God. The propheticness of the ministry of Jesus. Now, the Bible says this. If we, if we go back to Luke chapter 4, where Jesus down there around verse 12 or 18, uh, uh, 12 or 18, where he says, he took the scroll and opened it and found the place where it was written. Now, the Bible says this. He went in the synagogue as was his custom. Jesus had a traveling ministry, and his foundation scripture for his ministry was Luke 4, or Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord's upon me. 
Jesus is making a declaration that his, <clears throat> the propheticness of his ministry was to undo the works of the devil. And we have a scripture that says this, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Think about that. Now Jesus, Jesus tells us he's anointed to do these things over in Luke 4, quoting Isaiah 61. We find out that, it, that things stopped him from doing things because people got offended. Amen. But it was part of his ministry. His ministry was to go and to do things. For this purpose, find that if you can find that. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might to destroy the works of the devil. One Bible, now I, I believe if you go and get the French Bible and, and then translate it back into English, okay? Uh, you know, sometimes people with different languages carry the import of the thought but say it in a different way. Okay, does that make sense? So you might have something that's, that if you read it in French and translated it in English, wouldn't say it exactly the way the English said, but it, it, would carry the same, it would carry the same meaning. And so, he that committed sin is of the devil, for the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And I believe it's the French Bible translated back into English says, that this, for the this purpose was the Son of God manifest, that he might reduce to zero the works of the devil. Hallelujah. Well, it says it's, it's importing the same thought. Amen. But reduce to zero the works of the I like, devil. I like reducing to zero the works of the devil. Amen. The, the, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. I said, for this purpose was the Son of God manifest. What does the Bible say about Jesus? He went round about their villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all manner of sickness among the people. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. So we find out that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil. This is the prophetic, the, prophet, the prophecy, the prophetic anointing on the ministry of Jesus was to carry out the will of the Father to destroy the works of the devil. And we found out that Jesus said in John 10, 10, what did Jesus say? The thief cometh not but for two. Now that's just King Jimmy for. The, the reason the thief comes is. <laughs> okay. But, you know, the, the, the guy get flowery. The thief cometh not but for two. Cheerio, Jack. That's a very good statement, thou. All right. <clears throat> the reason the enemy comes, or as the King Jimmy says, I'm sorry, I had a friend who, who, was, who visited, it was in the area a year ago or so, and I was pre he, he, I called him and said, let's get together. You're, you're here for the ACC tournament. Let's get together. And so he went on the Internet and listened to one of my sermons between the time I called him and the time I picked him up at the hotel to go get Starbucks. And it was a sermon where I, taught, I referred to the King Jimmy. He just thought that was funny, okay? <clears throat> Not the King James, but the King Jimmy. Hallelujah. Uh, here, here's a little church history. The King James Bible, although it was authorized to begin, it was never, the final copy was not authorized. So it's the unauthorized, authorized version. Hallelujah. Praise God. Where was that before I got off the King Jimmy? Yeah. The thief cometh not but for two to kill, to steal, and destroy. I have come. See, now, there, there's a thesis and an antithesis, an, 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 an antithesis. The thesis is that the thief steals, kills, and destroys. The antithesis, or the antithesis, opposite. So it's pronounced antithesis because, you, you know, how, how language works. But if you hyphenate it, it would be antithesis. So it's the opposite thesis. So the thesis is, the thief kills, steals, destroys. The opposite or the an antithesis is, but I have come, or you know, but's understood. I have come that they might have life and have it, or Zoe, life and have it more abundantly. Well, it, well, let me ask you something. Is sickness destructive? Does, 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 it, does disease destroy? Does it still? It steals life. Sickness and disease steal life. They kill. They bring destruction to the physical body. And so, let me ask, because we're talking about the origin of sickness. So if the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, where did it come from? If sickness kills, steals, and destroys, and the thief is the one who comes to kill, steal, and destroy, then where does sickness come from? It comes from the devil. Well, we know it's not God. Because <clears throat> Jesus said, I came, or I come, that they might have life. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? And we know that there, there are spiritual laws in operation in the earth. There is a law of sin and death. 
But there's also the law of the spirit of life that's in Christ Jesus. God sent Jesus that he might, we might have life. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> life spiritually is to be born again. Life physically is health. Ultimately, because of the seal of the Holy Spirit, a promise, we will get a glorified uh, eternal body like the Lord Jesus Christ has. At the, at the rapture of the church, the dead in Christ arise, and they which are alive remain shall be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye, and will go and meet the Lord in the air, so shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. We'll get a glorified body. But in the meantime, we are, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly, have health. See, life to the body is health. Cancer is not life to the body. It kills. Are you here? Physical ailments are not life to the body. They bring destruction. Well, remember we just quoted a moment ago, Acts 10, 38, how God anointed. Remember we're talking about the prophetic um, declaration of the ministry of Jesus. Acts 10, 38 confirms that prophetic declaration of the ministry of Jesus in the arena of health and healing. It says, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing what? Good. Okay. And healing, and healing, and healing all who were oppressed of the devil. Now, sickness, thus must be satanic oppression. Whether directly or indirectly on the human body, the physical body. The physical body was not designed to be sick. As a matter of fact, the human body has in it agents that work against sickness and disease, just built into you. You cut yourself, what happens? Antibodies in your body. Your, your body begins to go to that area, wherever you're cut, and begins to fight bacteria, begins to fight uh, disease, fight anything foreign trying to get in there, it begins to fight it. I mean, we're all wolverines. Hallelujah. How many have not seen Wolverine or X-Men or anything like that? Can't use that example. Well, let's forget it. I don't have time to explain Wolverine. Anyway, but for those who get it, we're Wolverines. Your body is designed to heal itself. Now, because of the fall, because of, because of sin in the earth, and because of that, you know, and because of degradation, uh, there are times it can't. It, it, does, it can't combat Satan's evil. He cre he's created diseases that, uh, that are perverted, you know, things. Cancer. Cancer is a mutation of healthy cells. They turn on themselves. Leukemia, the, the, the white, the red corpuscles begin to fight against, the, and the white corpuscles begin to fight against each other. They're working hard. That's, they, see, that's not, no, that's not how God designed it. It's, it's Satan perverting the health of the human body. But still, in all that, the body is designed to work towards healing itself. You know, here, if you get some doctors who are really honest, they say, we don't heal anybody. We just simply aid nature. They're aiding the natural process of the body. If the body doesn't catch up to it, like, you know, like chemotherapy stuff is designed, you know, what they do is they kill with chemotherapy or, or radiation. They kill the cancerous cells. Now, they kill a bunch of good ones with it, but they're, they're, here's, here, here's what they're trying to do. They're trying to kill so many cancer cells less, I mean, and not kill as many of the good cells in the process that the, the cancer cells die and there's enough good cells left over to recover. That's what they're doing, you know, and that's, that's, what, that, that's what they're attempting, that's their philosophy behind that is, to go in and kill all the cancer cells. They know they're going to kill good cells with it, but their hope and their design and desire is they'll kill all the cancer cells and leave enough good ones still functioning for the body to begin to recover itself. It don't always work, you know, because you're, you're taking poison and it's going in there to kill the cancer cells. Radiation, same thing. They're going in to kill cancer cells. They're trying to radiate them. They want the cancer cells to glow. You know? You know, they start singing, you know, that we are the world or something while they're glowing out of your body. You know? They radiate them. 
but those, those, those processes are designed not to heal. They are designed to destroy the destructive cells so that the cells that do heal take over. Okay? So your God designed your body to resist. Resist sickness and disease. How I many know when you, you know, you get, you know, we get a, a cold, you know, and they're hacking and you're coughing. What's going what, See, all that mucus and all that stuff is the body fighting the infection. You may not like it, the ha, ah, ah, you know, nasty loogies and all that stuff. It's kind of the yuck. But that really is coming from the body fighting the infection that's in the body. Are you here? And then the body expectorating, expectorating, that's probably not a word. Kicking out of the body that stuff. All right? Now, I just, I just submit that to you to understand this. If God designed the body to heal itself, he's not. He, he's designed to help. Now, there is divine healing where the God comes in and he heals. See, doctors aid, they, they, they give aid to the natural process. See, if they go in and kill all the cancer cells, they don't fix the healthy cells. They just simply er eradicate the unhealthy cells. They kill them. And then, they try, then it's up to the, will, the person's will to live and their body to take over and get the job done to recover from it. Okay? So doctors don't heal. Okay? They aid. And we're not, we're not against doctors. I'm not saying that. God heals. Divine health and healing, you can go in and, and, and the, the power of God hits you and it eradicates all of the cells right there on the spot and you're totally 100% well because you came in contact with the glorious power of God. You don't have to wonder, did I get it or not? you will be singing with Ray Jean. I got it, I got it. Ray Jean and Nancy Harmon. I got it. It's something about the Holy Ghost. I, I'm sorry. Hallelujah. All right. So the prophetic outline of the ministry of Jesus is health and healing. That's part of his ministry. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This mankind was bound and the prisoner keeping was Satan. Jesus came to set him free. Glory to God. Also in the fact that there's sickness and disease comes from the devil. God put enmity between Satan and the seed of the woman. In the Garden of Eden in Genesis 3.15, he said, the seed, you shall bru the seed of the woman, you'll bruise his heel, and it shall bruise your head. He put enmity between you and the seed of the woman, thy seed and the seed of the woman. Satan's been working against God's creation ever since. Satan works against God's creation. They're talking about now, I just saw something on an on article today, that doctors are warning of superbugs that could wipe out 100 years of medicine, medical advances. Now, don't get afraid. We, uh, super bugs aren't any bigger than what Jesus is already taking care of. Amen? But you see, um, you know, we, we've given so many antibiotics to people. And so many, you know, so many antibiotics over just every time somebody gets this or that, they get an antibiotic. That you, you're, they're creating uh, the devil. Just mute, things just mutate. And you get, you get these bugs or these, these uh, things that are uh, antibiotic resistant. Well, how does that happen? The devil. There's an evil devil out there. Well, what are we going to do if I get a super bug? I got a super healer. Amen? See, Satan's just working constantly. Have you noticed that they keep coming up? Everybody, every time we conquer one thing, something else shows up. Think about it now. They cured polio in, the, in what, the 40, late 40s, early 50s? Polio was, was, was destroyed. You don't have people, in, nobody in our country gets polio. We wiped out chicken pox. Now, some pinhead thought it was a great idea to put weaponized chicken pox in some laboratory somewhere in America so we can use it later on. They have weaponized chicken pox. You can wipe out, you can wipe out whole elements of populations with that. You know? We wipe it, we're, tr we're trying to wipe the stuff out, not weaponize it and use it and put it out on the populace, except evil men. But so we've had a lot of medical advances with the devil always trying to come up with something new. AIDS. They're, they're, think they, they're, they're just wrestling things the other day. They believe they're on the, the brink of finding a cure for AIDS. Hallelujah. You go, Greg. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, glory. 
I can preach too. Hallelujah. I got a bigger microphone. Hallelujah. All right. All right. So in the, see, Satan's always working against the creation of God to bring destruction and to bring misery. <coughs> so the or, we're just talking about the origin of sickness. Now remember, uh, I remember the guy in the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 5.5. 5, he was sleeping with his stepmama. And the church was okay with it. Why? We're all just looking at the finished work of Jesus. It doesn't matter. You know, he's probably a big giver. Now, if he'd been a homeless guy doing that, they'd have thrown him out. But see, he's probably a big giver. I done with what, Brother Bill? Brother Bill said I done gone to meddling. <laughs> how, me, how come you to get off on a thing like that? Done gone to meddling. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Anyway, you know, now, now, now Paul found out about it. He got wind of it. Somebody sent him the tape. Yeah. <laughs> Paul got a hold of that and sent a letter. Amen. He said, well, let me tell you something. I heard that you got somebody in the congregation sleeping with a stepmama. And you hadn't done anything about it. Well, I am. I'm turning him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Now, what? Now, why didn't he turn him over to God? God don't have anything to put on him. He just took the guy and bound him over to the devil and, said, and, and just, you know. Now, later in 2 Corinthians, which may have been 4 Corinthians, we're just mess with you now. They, actually, maybe 3rd Corinthians. They, 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 there's a belief that there was two other letters to the church at Corinth, and because of things that were said in the two letters, it sounds like there were other letters written that they, that they don't have copies of. So, so in 4th Corinthians, now I'm just going to mess with you now. Hallelujah. Um, Paul said, now receive such a one back in. Lest he be overcome with sorrow. And he probably repented and stopped sleeping with his stepmama. Not probably, I know, he did. Paul wouldn't have said receive him back. He was said, and he's staying out in the cold until he gets it right. Amen. See the church. See the church. Isn't it amazing how we got people telling us now that love just lets people sin and get away with it. When Paul's demonstration of love was, we're going to turn it over to the devil and let the devil have a heyday with him until he repents, so that he doesn't go to hell, so that his spirit be saved in the day of the Lord. But these lunatics tell you you, can't, you, can do, you can do anything you want to and it's not going to cost you anything with God. You're not going to lose your salvation. You're not going to lose your status with God. And Paul said, I'm going to turn him over so that he will be saved in the day of the Lord. Love demanded correction. Now, this was not judgment. It was correction. But even on all that, let's, just, let's not get down that path because that's not where we are right now. Talking about the origin of sickness. Who was the one able to put, inflict something on the man who was in an incestuous relationship? The devil. Paul didn't say, well, I judge this, and I'm going to put, you know, the most dreaded disease of the day on him. Emrods or something. What's Emrods? Go look it up. I don't remember it. I, don't remember, I think I remember looking at it one time and it wasn't good. It was all hemorrhoids. There you go. They're like I said. I mean, you know, Paul didn't say, I, I bind over such a one and give him hemorrhoids. Hello? He said, I bind him over to Satan for the destruction of his flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord. Are you here? So who had the sickness to do something with? Not God. Okay? Now, just don't get too caught up, you know, on something. You know, he was bound over because he was living in sin. The hand of protection was gone because he was living in open sin. 
And he'd been, if he'd been repentant or saying, you know, I, I shouldn't have done that. I'm, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. There was nothing. nothing but he, would, he was openly doing it in the congregation. How do you remember Star Trek? The needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. All right. Or the one. All right. In Deuteronomy 28, and we're not going to read all that, but if you read chapters 28, verses 1 through 14, how many of all that, all that talk about the blessing of God? I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the country. I'm blessed in everything I set my hand to. My cattle's blessed. My vineyards are blessed. My fields are blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm like Tammy Faye. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. We are blessed. Anybody remember Tammy Faye? All right. Hallelujah. And, uh, you know, but you get down to verse 10, 15, it says, if you don't obey the commandments of the Lord your God, you'll be cursed in the city and cursed in the field. And then it starts talking about all the, all the plagues and the sicknesses that came on the Egyptians. When, now, let me, let me say something here. Because, you know, God, really, the Hebrew says that he allowed those things. Wait, if the hand of protection was removed, Satan, just like in Job, Satan was able to come in and do stuff to him. Read the Bible. Israel never went into captivity when they were walking in obedience to God. Did they? What happened? And there arose another king who built, who built orchards and images, and they went into captivity. Every time Israel got in trouble, it was because they were sinning. And book of Hebrews says, these things are written as, now King James uses the term in samples, but just means you know, examples. These things are written as examples. They enter not in because of unbelief, the hardness of their heart. And these things are written to us about Israel as examples to us. Everybody say examples. So, bad stuff, sickness comes on people. You know, in Deuteronomy, all the, all the sicknesses that came on people were part of the curse. Part of the curse. Where did the curse come from? Well, the curse, the, the initial curse of Sin, sickness, and spiritual death, or poverty, sickness, uh, spiritual death, poverty, and sickness came because of the fall of Adam in the Garden of Eden. That entered into the earth because of the fall of Adam in the Garden of Eden. The law, <clears throat> the curse of the law, Galatians 3.13 says, Christ, has been, uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, so it's written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. Glory to God. Amen. But the curse of the law, we find in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 through the end of the chapter. All the way down. You're cursing your body, and this will come on you, and that will come on you, and you'll have all these diseases. All, why? Because of the curse. Not because it was sent from God, it's the curse. God created man to live. Adam sold out and caused spiritual death to overtake humanity. Spiritual death caused physical death. Physical death or, or destruction in the physical body opened the door to, to susceptibility to disease and sicknesses. Poverty was part of the curse of the law, sweating, living by the sweat of your brow. Now, let me say something. In the beginning, we, weren't, we didn't have to do all that stuff. You just went out and... Now, they, did, they were tenders of the garden. But, you know, you can sit down and look at the work of Jesus that never had happened yet. I'm being facetious now. You know, they, they didn't have all that uh, hard labor and the, and the struggle. God created it a different way. The earth was going to yield fruit of itself. It was going to water itself. Hallelujah. Amen. We were in a greenhouse. We really were. The earth was in a greenhouse until, the, until Noah. All right. But, sick, but the, the sickness is the curse of the law. Paul's thorn in the flesh. Now, what, this, we don't have time to get into the to the other side of all this now on Paul's thorn. But Paul's thorn, the Bible says it was the messenger of Satan. Did not say, it said it was the messenger of Satan sitting above him. Now here's something really interesting. If we look into the, uh, to, to the teaching on the millennium, in Isaiah 33, 24, it says, and the inhabitant shall, say, shall not say, I am sick. There's not going to be any sickness in the millennium. Under the millennial reign of Christ, there will be no sickness. Because Christ is reigning over the earth. See, in whom the God of this world are blind to the eyes of them, lest they should believe and see the light and believe. Amen. So Satan's the God of this world right now. And so he is uh, instituting sickness wherever he can and disease wherever he can. 
You know, I mean, you know, you don't you don't need Obamacare or Republican care or Democrat care. You need Holy Ghost care. You need the power of God to work in you. You need to be believing God. Amen. You need to be believing God and trusting God and looking to heaven. Because I'm going to tell you something, doctors, doctors just run out of things they can do. And let's face it, there's, there's stuff, that, you know, in the, in the world economy and the things going on in the world economy. If you go to England, you go to some of the, social, the socialist countries of Europe and how their health care runs, uh, you better be able to believe God. Now, um, um, overseer of, of, of um, a Bible school in, in Italy, back a number of years ago when we went, if I called the name, many of you would know who I'm talking about, but you know, we had, we had just been, and I had gotten this horrible ear infection. We got in the bathtub and, you know, and, and, and got water in my ear. And then, of course, we looked at the bathtub when it got full. The water was brown. It's probably not what you want in your ear. I mean, I, I was, I, in a couple of days, it was bleeding. That's how bad it was. And I went to, you know, we were just, you go to the pharmacy, and, and you don't go to the doctor. You just go to the pharmacy, and they, they, he gave me a 600-milligram ta ta set of tablets of antibiotics, 600 milligrams per tablet. When I got back to America, the first thing they said, let's take you off of these. That's the first thing they told me when I went to the doctor. Let's take you off of these. Now, about two weeks after we went, the, the father of the, the, the white overseer's wife, well, they were overseers together, but the wife, her father came, and they were moving the refrigerator around, and he cut himself on something rusty and got, got an infection. And, and I'm telling you what, he got into the hospital over there and almost died. The doctor may come by once in the morning and they'll tell them uh, how to change the IV bottles, tell them how to change the bandages. They were doing all the work. No nurse was coming in and checking them. They weren't coming in and checking your blood pressure every 30 minutes. They weren't coming in doing anything else. It was all them. And what they were doing, they were believing God because he almost died. They, they prayed him out of death. Now, let me say something. We need to get there right now and here in America because what, what they're trying to bring here is they're trying to bring that to America. And, you know, you think you just run off to the hospital and everything's going to be hunk of door. You better get to where you can believe God so that if you, have to, if you, you get in a situation, your faith can get you out of it. And you recognize where the sickness comes from. It comes from the devil. And you get, so, <clears throat> see, sometimes, and the Bible says some trust in chariots and some in horses. We can get lulled in the trusty entities other than God. Now, humanity may do that, but the church can't afford that. Can you say amen? We can't trust our government to take care of us financially or physically. We can't trust in chariots or horses. We have to remember the name of the Lord our God. Amen. We have to put our trust in God. We have to believe that God's going to deliver us. God's going to supply our need. God's going to minister life to our body. We have to be people of faith. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. And so during the millennial reign of Christ, there won't be any sickness. Um, Isaiah 11, 9, they should not hurt nor destroy all of my holy mountain. Um, Malachi 4, 2, the son of righteousness shall rise with healing in his wings. And it's also significant to understand that during this time, Satan has been bound, according to Revelation 20, 23. I mean, Revelation 22 and 3. Satan's bound, there's no sickness. All of a sudden, Satan's bound for the thousand-year millennial reign of Christ, and there's no sickness. That's all you need to know where sickness comes from then, isn't it? If Satan's bound for a thousand years and during that whole time there's no sickness, then that must tell us where the sickness is coming from. Duh! Are you here? I mean, if every night at 3 o'clock in the morning somebody's out in their back porch playing rock and roll and... Um, you know, bu you know, busting your, your chops in, their, in your bed with a, no with a noise. How many, how many know your, your wall can act like a bass reflex speaker? My neighbor comes out every once in a while and plays basketball. When they, as soon as they hit the basketball on the concrete, it hits the side of my house, and when it does, it comes into my bedroom, and it, instead of just that bing, it goes boom. And then it hits the backboard. Boom. And they go bang, bang, bang. Bing, bing, bing. Boom, boom, boom. Finally, I told him. I stopped at the school. I was one day and stopped at the school and said, do you know how loud a basketball sounds in my bedroom at 730 in the morning? Because you're going to go out and get three shots in before you go to school. And I'm getting my precious sleep. The 
the, the older brother went, it's not me. He said, it's my young, younger brother. I said, yep, I know. He said, I'll have a talk with him. Said, Thank you. Then I got the younger brother later in the day, and he just <laughs> looked at me. He said, Anytime after 8 o'clock, play all you want to play, which means they're gone to school Monday through Friday. They're not going to be doing it. You know, I, you know 8 o'clock, okay, I, I get up at 8. That's fine. That's good enough. But 7.30, 7.15, you're out there shooting hoops. How come you need to get off on that? Do you remember? Huh? Right. So, anyway, you got neighbors at 3 o'clock in the morning banging and playing music all the time. And then all of a sudden, that family goes on vacation. You're not really sure what was coming from. You're not sure what neighbor was banging their drums at 3 o'clock. And well, you, may, you may suspect it, but you're not really sure. But that family goes on vacation and it stops for a week and starts the first day they come back. Guess what you figure out? You know who's doing it now because while they were gone... You were absent from that. We have, we've had that happen. You know, our, our neighbor behind us, he used to, before he went off to college, he, at 11, 12 o'clock at night, you, you hear him on the back, he go, I think went on the back porch, which was screen, screened in and not closed in, and play music. And they'd be over there, bam, 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 playing this Indian sounding, you know, but the drums would hit my back wall of my house and just, my wife's thinking, how long are they going to do it? Now, we weren't 100,000% positive it was who it was, but I'm telling you, when he went to college and it stopped, we figured it out. And he came back. So now, now when it happens, we know who it is. Dun, 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 dun. Well, when the devil, I'm not saying, I'm just saying that to give you an example. When the devil's bound for a thousand years, there's not going to be any sickness. That must tell us who's been bringing all the sickness around. And just think about the fact that in the millennial reign of Christ, Jesus ain't going to make anybody sick. Why not? If he's the one making people sick, he should be doing it during the millennial reign. No, but when the devil's bound, it'll stop for a thousand years. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Glory to God. All righty. So that, um, ooh, let's get back to where I was. I, I hit a button and closed all my notes. But we're still good. Right? Amen? Glory. Somebody say Shandai. Yep. Yeah, here we go. I'm, I'm, I'm getting caught up now. And then Jesus rebuked sickness in the same way he rebuked demons. Jesus uh, rebuked him, and when the devil had thrown him into the midst of the fire he, out of him and hurt him not, Luke 4.35, uh, this is the case of um, the, the one was possessed of a devil. But then in the case of healing Peter's mother-in-law, remember now, so he rebuked the devil, and that devil came out. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. Luke 4, 39. So when he re dealt with the, the, the person that was demon possessed, he rebuked the devil, and when he dealt with Peter's mother Peter's mother in law <laughs> Father in law Father in law All right. We must have watched that hee-haw thing recently because I'm talking like Karen. You know? Jasper Id. And Pat, pa what? Jasper Painty. Karen, I still don't know how you did that. Practice. <laughs> anyway. Father in law. Lord help me. But when he came to P Peter's mother in law, <laughs> he rebuked the fever just like he rebuked the devil and the demon possessed guy. Why? Because he viewed them from the same source. He viewed them as the same thing. Demons and demon oppression are dealt with the same way. He just rebuked it. Hallelujah. Amen. So sickness is, is, or originates with Satan. I said, sickness originates from Satan. Its entrance into the human race came as a result of the fall and sin entering in. I believe F.F. F. Bosworth says it this way. He said, sickness is the evil child, is the child of his evil parent, sin. Now, we said this the other week, just because you're sick doesn't mean you sin. It's that sin is in the earth and sickness came with it. 
Amen. The entrance that sickness had was through the gateway of sick, sin coming in and affecting the, the, affecting the physical body as sin affects the spiritual body or the spirit of man. Amen. Praise God. 